first of all, welcome. Um, we're going to talk about your interest in, in breast cancer. Um, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Christoph Thompson. I'm head of the gynecological department of the Martin Luther University of Halle, that is in central Germany. And our interest especially is in prognostic uh, markers and predictive marker in breast cancer. What's the difference between a prognostic marker and a predictive marker? So, as we have heard here again and again, if you have an interesting therapy, first, you, this therapy should work in a substantial manner, and secondly, you should have patients with a substantial risk, risk in order to reduce really the risk of uh, recurrence in adjuvant mm -hmm. therapy. So, that's so, a pro pro prognostic factor. So, prognostic factor does say you about the, um, the, the, the course of the disease, uh, without any therapy, mm -hmm. and a predictive marker is going to give you information whether a therapy will work or not. Now you say you've been hearing it a lot here in, in ASCO, and that's because of the development of personalized medicine. Yes. And um, there's been a lot of hype. In fact, yeah. some people have uh, said there's been too much hype. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What about this meeting? I think, <coughs> I think you took the right word. Personalized medicine is, I think, the, the word of the day here in ASCO and in Chicago. Um, people, especially in the companies, saw in the last year a lot of delusive trials. So they invented nice, sexy drugs uh, that should work, <coughs> called targeted drugs, that should work especially against distinct cancer types, of breast cancer and other cancers. But then they found that the effects are very tiny, very, very small. And so you have to recall the word uh, you have, especially breast cancer, which is a heterogeneous disease, uh, to have the right drug to the right person, to the right tumor, and only then you will have a substantial effect. And just to describe the, or to identify those patients who will benefit from the specific drug, you have to use prognostic and predictive factors. What's your standard regime at home now, so, before ASCO? Actually, in uh, evidence-based prognostic factors and predictive factors are very, very few. Mm. Uh, we use the clinical pathological factors as those described in the St. Gallen uh, Committee, and we use uh, invasion factors like UPA and PI, which are developed in Germany and can distinct in the intermediate risk group between high and low risk. And for um, the indication for any therapy, we just use the classical factors like ER, that's estrogen receptor, PER, progesterone receptor, and the HER2 factor. But other factors are not validated for indicating therapy. So now you've been to ASCO 2010. Has anything changed? Uh, that is a problem. We do have interesting developments, interesting new techniques, gene, gene profiling, and so on and so on. However, uh, we have still to say uh, the classical factors, maybe including uh, UPMP1, are the only factors that can be used in um, breast cancer adjuvant therapy. Now, you and I have met before in um, a conference discussing BRCA1 and 2 mutations and so on. What, what's your, your view of the state of the, state of the play there? So uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are interesting in hereditary cancer, breast cancer, and ovarian cancer for... Um, convincing patients to, to get um, prophylactic therapies mm -hmm. like prophylactic operations or prophylactic drugs. So therefore, BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are interesting. Second point might be the new idea of PARP inhibitors. Mm -hmm. However, you uh, discussed it uh, before. Uh, we do not have uh, exact prognostic or predictive factors for the effect of PARP inhibitors. And we do know that especially PARP expression is not confined to triple negative breast cancers. It's not confined to BRCA1, BRCA2 mutations, but you can, you can find it. In uh, many patients, uh, even with uh, receptor positive uh, cancers, and there will be today a nice uh, presentation by a group of Germany, uh, Sibylle Leubel and Gunther von Mikwitz, they show uh, that PARP inhibitors can also be predictive for uh, effect of chemotherapy in uh, near adjuvant therapy. I see. Given together or given sequentially? No, PARP inhibit. No, excuse me. Or just PARP, the PARP, the PARP expression of uh, ER positive or ER negative tumors right. can be predictive for the effect of chemotherapy. Right. In, and also PARP one inhibitors? No, no that's not true. No, no, yet. that's a retrospective analysis of a okay. huge amount of patients right. okay. of, of prospective trials in Germany. So, what are you hoping for from next ASCO, 2011? 
So let's first go uh, one step back. Uh, if you're looking for the development of prognostic factors, unless we have these very nice techniques of gene profiling and uh, new tests, uh, we have still the problem that the tests on the one side are too expensive, on the other side they are too complicated, yeah. too sophisticated. So coming back, uh, we're finding a grouping, a modern typing of breast cancer that is molecular typing. And this molecular typing describes uh, patient groups with ER positive uh, cancers that are called luminal cancers, which are quite favorable prognosis. Mm -hmm. And second hand, the HER2 dependent cancer, that is uh, uh, patients where uh, trastuzumab and under anti HER2 directed drugs will work. And then we do have the basal or triple negative cancers, uh, cancers where we have to look for new drugs and new methods. And although this uh, grouping, this uh, typing is based on molecular expression filing, um, today uh, we are looking whether we can just use immunosochemistry and also Q67 and, and so on. No? Yeah, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy, but this new grouping, this new categorization of breast cancer might uh, have a future in terms of uh, giving the right therapy to the right patients. So you expect some trials reporting on that sort of approach? I expect this, this approach will uh, optimize and you will look for better discrimination, better correlation of this immunosochemical typing to the original genetic typing and mm -hmm. then uh, this more easier, more uh, adaptive uh, typing will be the future. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> Let's see. But on the other hand, there's, I think, one, one optimistic point uh, which we have seen here because uh, it's always better to be preventive in order, to, uh, in, um, in comparison to have a um, disease, advanced disease. That is not especially in breast cancer, but in ovarian cancer. If you're talking about biomarkers, uh, there was a very nice uh, presentation on uh, screening with uh, the old-fashioned TR125 uh, tumor marker, and uh, this American group could show in a 3,000 uh, patient population and uh, 3,000 women population over a couple of years, uh, regular testing, uh, that by testing TR12.5 and an indication using vaginal ultrasound, they can uh, um, select patients or they can find those patients who will have an early, early ovarian cancer. And then they're operated on, and so they have uh, chosen all the, or they, so they did find all these uh, patients with ovarian cancer in early stages. And in this group, uh, they found five uh, in eight operations, five uh, early ovarian cancers, uh, which uh, can be cured. Uh, and on the background, that ovarian cancers no no, uh, usually are fine in the very advanced stage. Sure, sure, sure. It's a very, very great and, and the uh, number of false positives. A uh, few, very few. Yeah. So actually, because the, the interesting point was yeah. 99 per, uh, 99 point six uh, specificity, yeah. which is for a screening uh, test excellent, and uh, only three operations for one uh, cancer. So it's okay. excellent. So that's, that's promising. It needs a lot more people because, of course, that's not of course. like enough. The, the CA125 has got 10,000 uh, yes, yes, but women in it. And, and there, with the, the early days, there was, there was an um, over-operation rate, of, uh, which was unacceptable. 10 to a or uh, even more. But we have a conf confirmation study in uh, the UK, mm. uh, which a huge number of patients, sure, and they sure. showed identical numbers. And so it's a very optimistic point. It's looking good. Yeah. Christoph, thank you very much indeed.